The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Hello, I'm Javier Hernandez. And I'm Bridget Lyles. Every year, thousands of law enforcement personnel receive training at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, or FLETC as the students call it, in Charleston, South Carolina. For more than a decade, FLETC has been home to the Federal Probation and Pretrial Academy. Nearly 400 newly hired probation and pretrial officers graduate from the state-of-the-art facility every year. The Federal Probation and Pretrial Services Office, headquartered at the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts in Washington, is responsible for the Academy. A unique partnership between the AO and FLETC allows the Probation and Pretrial Services Safety and Training Division to use the state-of-the-art facility. We need top-notch training uh, for officers to do their job correctly. Uh, the other aspect of it is officers' work is inherently dangerous. We want to minimize the risk to officers in carrying out their duties. It also allows us to form a culture that we, the new officers there, can help shape what we stand for. Not only now, but what we're going to stand for moving forward. And I think that's only possible because you have a common experience and the academy offers that common experience. The student officers are engaged in a comprehensive curriculum and realistic labs and scenarios. This standardized training prepares graduates to hit the ground running out in the field. It is important to realize that you're part of a bigger picture, that there's a legal framework from which we all need to operate, and there's an importance to have a collective identity as a system. I came through the academy as a student in 2006, and even then it was a comprehensive program and it really gave me the foundation I needed to be successful as a probation officer. Now I'm returning as an adjunct faculty member, um, and I'm really impressed with how they've continued to evolve to meet the ever-changing needs of our system. She's right. The Academy has changed over the years. And we found out just how much when we sat down with the Academy Director, Ron Ward. Both the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts and Chief U.S. Probation and Pretrial Services Officers saw the need for a comprehensive training academy for probation and pretrial services officers. Once we secured funding and established a partnership with the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, we started training in January of 2005. We began with a three-week program of just firearms and safety and a few core classes. That has evolved and now we have a comprehensive program that addresses all the core classes and also promotes effective communication, establishing relationships. Of course, we added scenarios and all the other things that we do. At this time, the program lasts six weeks. You guys all got the uh, email that I sent you about the meeting today. Instructors here are veteran officers and supervisors who share their experience and what they have found to be the best practices in supervising defendants and offenders. BI, did you follow up? I believe that we hire the very best that our system has to offer. And in evaluations from the students to other people that visit the academy, one of the things we always hear is that the instructors are so passionate. Uh, we call it bringing your A game. Everything that we do, we try to bring our A game and we see that day after day. Things are going okay? The job of a U.S. probation and pretrial services officer demands that officers develop and continually draw from a diverse, complex set of skills. Judges rely on them to ensure justice is dispensed with fairness and respect. How's your counseling going with Freddie and Ira? The public relies on them for protection. Offenders and defendants rely on them for guidance and support. In addition to the firearms and, and safety program here, we also offer uh, core co competency classes in pretrial, pre-sentence, and post-conviction supervision, as well as uh, skills needed to perform those duties well as far as investigative tools, financial investigations, certain types of offenders and defendants that are specialized that, that officers would supervise or write reports about. With the limited resources and staffing that we have now, um, officers need to be able to do all of the work. Um, we don't have the luxury now of just plugging somebody into a particular function and letting them spend a couple of years doing that. Officers need to be ready to go to do any function uh, depending on where our workload needs are. That means the Academy must produce well-rounded officers. To do that, they use three main training modules.
In a classroom setting, students have the opportunity to learn about federal sentencing guidelines, evidence-based practices, and post-conviction risk assessment, among other things. They come to understand national policies and procedures, such as those related to location monitoring. I don't deal with location monitoring in my district, so there's a lot of stuff that I haven't heard that we learned this morning that just, you know, if I do get assigned cases when I get back to the district, I'll have a kind of a foundation of the, the, you know, the regulations and the monograph and those, and those kind of things. The second is role playing. Officers practice what they've learned and refine techniques by doing things such as conducting a pretrial interview. The third is applying what they've learned in realistic situations like testifying in court. Testifying skills is one of the most important things offered at the National Training Academy. It provides new officers with an opportunity uh, to come and learn and enhance their skills uh, in a real, very realistic environment uh, to help them prepare to go back and testify in their districts, something that we know most probation officers will be required to do at some point during the course of their career. And the officers here uh, who I've seen have done an excellent job. As we said before, the academy is state of the art and the training is as true to life as possible. Speaking of state of the art, the academy instructors use the latest technologies and the most effective training methodologies. Let's take a look. As important it is for the training topics we cover, as important is the training delivery. And so we use evidence-based training practices in the delivery of our training, especially to our predominantly Generation Y students. So the blended training concept is, is the way to go and as what the research and literature supports. In this blended environment, lectures, practical exercises, and the use of interactive technology all help train each class. For example, during investigative tools training, the students become the teachers as they research an application and then present it to the class. It was interesting to go through and see all the different types of uh, databases that there are that we have access to. Some of them, I didn't know they were out there, especially the DSS. It, I can see how it's going to put in all different kind of aspects for supervision, like myself, um, help with deadlines, uh, kind of an all-in-one tool so I can see all my deadlines, everything going with each individual offender and kind of keeps it organized for me so I can see what needs to be done in the timeline that it needs to be completed in. So it's something that I can definitely take back to district with me. These various methods of training help student officers develop the necessary skills they'll need to help predict defendant and offender risk to gain competency in core duties and to effectively communicate both to the court and those under supervision. In fact, one of the most important skills these students will learn is how to establish and maintain relationships with their clients through a program known as STAR. The goal of this training really is to teach officers skills that have proven to have the best effects on behavior change and reducing recidivism and having an impact on them while they're on supervision, but also long term so they can be successful once they're done with us. This block of training also allows students a chance to provide peer-to-peer -peer feedback, which is another teaching method here at the academy. What you, would you think um, she did well? But yet yeah, letting him... Students can then use these STAR techniques in other areas of supervision training, building a set of real-world skills that they'll rely on out in the field. Yes, good to see you again. Well, I'd like to think that, um, you know, we're an agent of change. We're here to uh, promote positive change in, in, our, in our clients and that we're, we're working towards a common goal. Seeing those changes, wanting those changes, rewarding those positive changes in their life. It does definitely make our job a lot easier when it comes to supervision of offenders. For home visits like that one, officers are often required to go into high crime neighborhoods and deal with individuals with a history of violence. On the streets, professionalism and communication are an officer's first line of defense. One of the primary tools that our officers use nowadays that has to do with their communication. Their ability to deal with people out in the public, establish rapport, and uh, kind of verbally give commands when they need to. But sometimes physical altercations are impossible to avoid. The instructors at the academy are committed to preparing officers to handle these situations and enhancing the safety of all who work in our system. Because the job's inherently dangerous by design. So we want officers to have a foundational base to be able to protect themselves up to and including 
a violent encounter that could involve the use of lethal force by an officer. Students learn national policies, legal principles, and review the latest incident reports. All of this helps prepare student officers to respond to threats using the appropriate type and amount of force. The techniques are universal, they're basic fundamentally, and as they go through the program, they become more complex, dealing with more of a complex type of attack. Bridget, what do you mean by type and amount of force? Well, officers are trained to retreat if they can, defend themselves if they must, use lethal force as a last resort. But some situations call for a response that is somewhere between defense and lethal force. That's why student officers are trained to use OC spray, commonly known as pepper spray. I'm just excited about this opportunity. This will uh, give us the opportunity to, if we get sprayed, if we uh, have a use of force uh, situation later, we'll be able to testify that we had exposure to it. Um, I'll know the effects of it. Switch it. Next strike shield. The pepper spray incident. I'm a federal officer at 2000 Bainbridge Avenue. Police dispatch patrol now. Helps on the way, Officer William. The situation calls for it, I'll definitely use it, but it won't be something that I just, you know, just go to just to go to it, because I'll know the effects that it'll have on the parts I'm spraying and also how it'll affect me if I get any of the blowback. Wow, that did not look pleasant. No, as we said before, their job is dangerous. And as a last resort, officers may have to draw their weapons. But first, in order to qualify to carry a firearm, officers must complete both a written exam and a qualification course approved by the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts. We have a, quite a mixed bag of experience. We have prior law enforcement from the federal, state, and local levels. We have people with no experience, people coming right out of college. We find people that have experience in other areas. But it really is a mixed bag, so uh, the way we roll out training has to really fit the diversity of the officers that are hired. Officer training includes the fundamentals of carrying a firearm, the importance of firearm safety, and courses of live fire. Just position yourself behind the actual wheel well. The Probation and Pretrial Services Office is in partnership with the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, who provides the basic marksmanship training. That gives the, the, our students a foundation, and then U.S. courts instructors then build on that program through what's called tactical pistol application. Tactical pistol is where they begin movement, and in that movement they start learning how to handle the gun, whether it's a phase one malfunction or emergency reload while they move. So we've been learning a lot about use of force and preparation during contact, uh, as well as before contact and after contact in the classroom. This is a great learning environment in terms of training and using those skills that we've learned in the classroom for a, a more dynamic, realistic approach. Also in Tactical Pistol, they actually begin to encounter force on force, where we have instructors engage them with paintball rounds, and they are engaging the instructors back with their non-lethal training rounds. Uh, that is really the final determination of how the students do when we come to the end of Tactical Pistol Block, and that is where the real life-saving skills training all comes together with the fundamental pistol skills. It includes skills that they've also learned in the mat room in defensive tactics and ORT. I had a couple malfunctions while we were training today and I was able to work through those malfunctions with my partner continuing to come at me in an aggressive fashion so I'd much rather appreciate learning this in this safe environment as opposed to learning it in the field if something were to happen. After six weeks, officers are ready to graduate. The ceremony marks the end of training and recognizes that through coursework, hands-on learning experiences, and practical applications, these students have become a class of well-rounded officers. When they return from the six weeks in Charleston, they really have that sense of a national system and just how big the federal probation system is and just how important it is in terms of what they do in Massachusetts could have an effect as far away as California. The impact of the Academy is not only in the transformation of the officers, it's in the strong, long-lasting camaraderie that develops among those who have gone through the six-week training academy program. I've learned so much from all the instructors who are very passionate. I have, they've built a foundation for me moving forward with my career. The instructors here were the most knowledgeable, passionate people I think I'll ever meet. 
Um, they know this job inside and out, and the things that they'll teach you are some things you'll never hear anywhere else. I'm now much more confident in my abilities. Uh, I've been through lots of training before, and this is the only one I come away actually feeling confident in my abilities. It's been a great, I think these people, um, I think I'll be in contact with the rest of my career. They're great people. Um, it's really a bonding experience being together with people for so long, in six weeks, and uh, you know, our, we all bring different things. We're all from different parts of the country. The six-week academy, the amount of training they received during that time is something that would take us over a year to replicate back in district. So we see that that is a great advantage for us. And then locally, we don't have to devote those resources to training those new officers because the academy does such a great job in the six weeks. Training for these graduates doesn't stop here. The veteran officers back in the graduates' home district will mentor them throughout the graduates' career. It's every officer's goal to become an agent of change and help defendants and offenders turn their lives around. We'd like to thank Ron Ward and the entire staff at the Federal Probation and Pretrial Academy in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Javier Hernandez. And I'm Bridget Lyles. Thanks for watching.